right, I'm going to start the stream now. All right. Okay, I believe we are live. Okay, great. Well, welcome to the March 5th, 2022 online meeting of the Chicago TI 994A Users Group. Uh, we're still locked out of the library, so we can't have in-person meetings uh, yet. Uh, so everything is virtual and online. Uh, my name is Victor Stirrup. I'm the president of the Chicago TI User Group. Uh, below is uh, James Mazurik. Hello. And introduce yourself, James, and what you do. Um, I don't know what I do. I am James Mazurik. I am a collector of computer of uh, classic computers and a little bit of an amateur computer historian. Not much of one, but um, and a recent a recent um, member of the Chicago TI Users Group. Um, and generally I tend to occupy whatever role is needed <laughs> when it's needed. <laughs> well, you're currently the, uh, broadcasting equipment chairman. You're instrumental in getting us on the YouTube and uh, hosting this meeting and, uh, the past meetings we've had online. Uh, Hal Shanafield, unfortunately, his internet is down and he's unable to join us this meeting. Which is a shame because I admire his historical perspective on some programs and programmers and his comments on what, uh, what things are and what they do. So to get things rolling here, uh, we got things a little different. is uh, this is not a TI computer displaying this screen. What this screen you're looking at is, is a Raspberry Pi in this micro uh, Nintendo game case. And the uh, connections are HDMI out, power in, two wired uh, Nintendo style controllers, a uh, dongle for a micro wireless keyboard and wired in this computer uh, this keyboard here so right now we're looking at uh, how this uh, machine started up it's running uh, TI-99 sim is uh, running under retro pi so uh, <coughs> excuse me here so we'll press uh, now operations a little different here because this machine, hang on a second here, there we go, uh, this machine uses the uh, A key to select rather than the enter key because it's a, a video game uh, front end that's running. So I'll press the A key and we'll press uh, two for parsec say in uh, any key to begin. And here's its uh, implementation of Parsec running. So your uh, D pad, direction pad, on the game controller works. And as soon as I press the fire button, we'll have uh, enemy ships coming on board here. The thing is, there's a little delay and latency in my system because the uh, this is going through a VGA to USB adapter into the computer so I have about up to like half a second delay on what I see on screen and what the computer is actually doing so if you see me playing a game it's going to be rather ineptly uh, you at home will be able to play it much better <laughs> so I'll press fire yeah, <laughs> so that's what a lot of this is going to be. Generally miss and crash, right? Yeah. 
So you'll see that a lot because I'm running about half a second behind. So to escape out of any of these uh, programs, you press the escape key. And that takes us to the uh, main menu of this emulation station. Now, when I first got this uh, this uh, SD, uh, SD card for this Raspberry Pi, uh, it had a whole bunch of different names up on this screen. And what I did was I f discovered that I could go into this options screen and using the arrow keys, arrow down, and edit this game's data. So on the first one, it says name. That's the name that will show up on the uh, on this menu screen. And it has the actual program name. And you can edit, like, uh, is it a favorite? Is it? Uh, do you want to hide it? Is it a kid's game? Uh, scrape, I think it looks online for artwork. And we'll just cancel this, because I'm not going to actually edit this game. And pressing space bar. Program and takes you back out. So the first option here yeah. is a one meg super card or two meg super card, a one meg super card, a 4A flyer, amazing adventure. Well, if you go down to adventure, say, and you select that, you can see your options there at the bottom of the screen. Press A. Back out. So the first option here is a one meg super card or two meg super card. A one meg supercar, a 4A flyer, amazing okay. adventure. Well, so we get the uh, TI screen. color bar screen. Now I can use the regular so TI uh, keys, one or two. I'll just screen press, screen two press two and press two again for adventure. So now we get the adventure. Uh, this emulator seems to cut off uh, like the last half a line of the bottom of the TI screen. Well, I'll press uh, any key to begin. It goes, where is the database? Well, although in this emulation, there's two disk drives, uh, you can't access a disk drive. Uh, that implementation is not included in this. Uh, the same thing with save CS1 and old CS1. It just sits there forever. So we'll hit Escape, and we're back to the main menu. So going up to the, uh, this is all in alphabetical order. Alpiner, Ambulance, Anteater, Ant Colony, Arcturus, Astro Fighter, Atari Soft. Press A on that. Uh, here's the uh, emulation of the Atari Soft cartridge. Two for Atari Soft. And uh, this is white on yellow. It might be a little tough to read. But here we got all those excellent Atari Soft games that play so good on the TI. Uh, Centipede, Defender, Dig Dug, Donkey Kong, Jungle Hunt, Moon Patrol, Ms. Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Picnic. Uh, it only shows the word Picnic. That's Picnic Paranoia. Uh, pole Position, Protector, Robotron, 2084. Uh, Seamus and uh, Superstorm. So those are all available. So these are all Atari Soft games that were ported to the TI-99? Yeah, I've actually got that cartridge uh, that's for sale. Uh, I think uh, James Fetzner has those for sale at the uh, Chicago TI Fairs. Uh, you have Barrage, which is sort of like uh, Missile Command. Uh, Berlin Wall, we actually played this a month or two ago. Uh, Beyond pa Parsec, uh, Milton Bradley's Bla or Blackjack and Poker, Black Hole, Blasto, the uh, tank game, Boxer, Breakthrough, Buck Rogers. Now here at Burger Time 1 and Burger Time 2, there is no Burger Time Mark 2. It's just Burger Time under different names was installed on this card and um, I renamed them to Burger Time 1 and Burger Time 2 to put them together in the same menu. Not all of these cartridges run on here. And here's Burger Builder. That's the tougher version of Burger Time. Because uh, in Burger Time, 
Uh, you go on the top, you drop a bun down, it drops down, and everything cascades. Burger Builder, no, you got to start from the bottom and uh, clear an opening up first. Uh, Card Sharp, Car Wars, Centipede, Championship Baseball. Uh, this, as you know, is an MBX cartridge and. It wants the MBX console to run. So Chicken Coop, Chisholm Trail, Computer War, Congo Bongo, uh, The Mighty Thor's Favorite Game, Connect Four, Crossfire. Okay, now this, D Station and D Station 2 are two different versions of the same game, the first one and the sequel to it. Defender. Uh, the TI demonstration cartridge, uh, Demon Attack and Demon Attack 2, it's the same game. They just had different names when I got this. Uh, Dig Dug, Donkey Kong, Driving Demon, E.T., uh, Escape the Castle. Uh, I think that is the same as King of the Castle. Uh, Espile, which was a side cart. Uh, Espile and uh, what was the other one? Minor 2049er. They were side carts because they were so big they needed 32K to operate. So they couldn't just plug into the uh, regular uh, console cartridge port. They had to go on the side. Face Maker, Fantasy, Fathom, Football, Frogger. Okay, this Games Times 3 shows up here a couple times, so select that. Yeah, when you press A to select it, you just tap it and let go. You don't hold down because then you get into a configuration menu that's very complicated. So here's the uh, three games. Uh, Flipper Mid High Score is actually uh, our old friend uh, Micro Pinball. And Super Topper is a game like Cubert. Uh, and Astro Fighter is a outer space shoot 'em up game. Now by pressing F10, I can go back to the TI color bar screen, and it's still the same thing. So you don't have to exit all the way back to the main menu. F3 will take you back to the main menu, just like Escape does. Okay, Germ Patrol. Uh, it's a rather extensive program. It's more edutainment uh, to teach kids about germs. And some games to, uh, you play to uh, try to stay healthy. Hangman, Hen House, Hen Pecked 1 and Hen Pecked 2, the same game. Hopper, Hunt the Wampus, our old buddy. Hustle, Jawbreaker 2, Jetpack, Jet Set Willy. Somebody was just talking about uh, they were looking for Jet Set Willy but didn't know the name of it. A very difficult jump the platforms games. Jumpy, Jungle Hunt, Junkman Jr. Gosh, I spent days on playing that one. That was great. Here's King of the Castle. It's the same as Escape, a different name. Uh, Night Lore, 3D Perspective, Lasso, Lobster Bay, Mash, Mankala, MB Games. We'll select that. You know, when I first posted this on my uh, Facebook page, I just quickly took blurry pictures of everything I saw, and uh, the names were all uh, different from what you see here. So here they got number two for Milton Bradley Games, three for Connect Four, uh, four for Hangman, five for Yahtzee, and six for Zero Zap. So I escaped from that. Micro Tennis, Micro Surgeon, long one of my favorite. Here's Micro Pinball by itself. Midnight Mason, Minor 2049er, Mission X, Moon Sweeper, Moon Mine, Moon Patrol, Mousk Attack, Ms. Pac-Man, Multiplan. Well, again, we could select Multiplan, <clears throat> but it's going to look for a disc and it's going to complain about it. That there's no disc named multi-plan or named multi in drive one. 
And if I can figure out how to get the drives working, uh, Mummy's Tomb, uh, Munchman, three different copies of the same program under different names. Uh, two of Munchmobile, Music Maker, uh, the TI one that plays real nice music in three voices. Neverlander, Night Stalker, Othello, Pac-Man. Okay, one underneath, Pac-Man DW. That's rather than Pac-Man 1 and Pac-Man 2, Pac-Man DW is a file that doesn't work. But that's a very minor thing considering all the other programs that do work on here. Parsec, Pickle Paranoia, Pitfall, Pole Position, Popeye, Princess and Frog, Protector 2, Cuber, Rabbit Trail, Rasmus, Time 8, Times 8. So we'll select that and see which of the eight games uh, we have here from uh, Rasmus, goes to Garden. So we get the TI color bar screen and see it's uh, bouncy, Jet Set Willy, Sports Game, Saber Bowl, Flappy Bird, Road Hunter, TI Scramble, and Titanium. Uh, Red Planet Rescue, as far as I know, that was never made as a cartridge. Uh, three versions of Return to Pirate's Island. Uh, River Rescue, Road Hunter, Robotron. The uh, Romox demo uh, shifts between uh, two of the four or five cartridges the Romox company did. Rotor Raiders, RXB, 2015. Well, that looks interesting. So we're going to select that. <clears throat> okay, here's our XP. We're going to select the version with the menu. Uh, we're going to select the editor assembler. Press D for directory. And disk 1. Oops, sorry. I wanted that to be caps. And there's a disk one, and it comes up with an error code. And you can see up at the top, the uh, the file's garbled there. So we'll just press Enter to continue. Directory. There we go. Directory. Zero files. Three three uh, free. Three fifty eight. Use zero. Okay. There's nothing in here, and if I write a short program and say save disk 1 or save disk 2, the machine just hangs. There is no disk 1 or disk 2 implementation built into this cart. Uh, SCRAA is a rather abstruse name, but it, uh, it comes up as a, a fun game <laughs> of uh, Spark Drummer's Challenge, Rescue at Atari Age. And I think what this does is it plays like Berserk, where uh, you're uh, running away from these monsters and they're chasing after you all the time. Uh, Saberwolf, Swarrow City, Sargon Chest, Schnazola, Scrabble. Sewer Mania, that was another MBX game. Uh, it runs fine. Uh, Seamus, Shanghai, Simon Says, Slimeoids, uh, Slake uh, Pliskina, Snagit, Soccer, Sorgan 2, Space Bandit, Springer, Spies Demise, Saint Nick. Boy, I had a ton of uh, trouble trying to get Saint Nick to run. And I eventually discovered it was I was using the uh, first software version of my F-18 uh, video device on my TI. And when I upgraded it, uh, St. Nick ran just fine. Starship Pegasus, Star Maze, Star Runner, two versions of Star Trek, one of Star Wars, Story Machine, uh, Strike 3. Uh, here's St. Nick again. 
shows up again for some reason. So I'm going to have to edit the display name. So I have yeah, I'm sure they, everything's coming from separate collections and kind of being yeah. merged together. So I'm going to have to have rename it for St. Nick 1, St. Nick 2. And then I know in the um, Maimon Mets community, um, as far as the cabinet video games go, there are often different releases of, of the um, ROM stuff. So mm -hmm. they may, you know, whoever put this together may have thought that maybe they were different releases of the same program yeah. and had some subtle differences, so they included them. Well, if I go into the uh, editor here, uh, yeah, it says St. Nick, sort name, discriminant image, video, marquee, rating, release date, publisher, genre. Uh, Submarine Battle, Submarine Commander. Okay, here's one. It's a third version of a demon attack called Super Demon Attack. But there's one strange thing I found about Demon Attack is none of them, uh, even on my cartridge, say Super on the title screen. They just say Demon Attack. So I don't know why the cartridge uh, exterior is labeled Super Demon Attack. Hmm. Superstorm, okay, SXB, uh, Super Extended Basic, uh, you can do a call cat, disc 1, disc 2, disc 3, and catalog a disc from Super Extended Basic, it's really nice. Tennis, TI's The Attack, TI Invaders, TI Logo, TI Scramble, uh, TI Toad, TI Workshop. This is the Data Biotics cartridge uh, that uh, could do all sorts of uh, stuff. I got one when they first came out. And I'll show you the menu screen here because uh, you could uh, uh, you could do sector editing, uh, disk management, load a program, debugger, editor, assembler. Uh, it was a handy cartridge to have. Uh, Texas Instruments Extended Basic, Tombstone City, Topper, three versions of Treasure Island, Tunnels of Doom, again, where is the game? And you can't load a game onto this from either uh, uh, CS1 or from uh, disc. So we'll click that. Okay, what? Turbo Forth? Well, let's see how this works. Uh, press number two, Turbo Forth. And it complains it can't find uh, block one on the disk drive. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Block based storage for fourth, not an uncommon feature. But we'll select that again. See if we can get into 80 column mode. Press option number three. And it doesn't seem to be supportive for 80 column mode. We're not even getting that error message showing up. Uh, Tudankam, Typo Man, U Boat, uh, two versions of Video Chess, two of Video Games, two of Video Vegas, two of Wing War. Uh, XB 2.6, uh, that's been included in the uh, GEM project now. XB plus zero zap. So back here, we're up at the top of the menu again. Let's take a look at this one meg supercar. Just 
used option two for games. Now this is interesting. Press spacebar for more. So on this we've got uh, A to N, Adventure to fire, uh, Fireball. Press the spacebar. Uh, we got Galaxia to Munchmobile. Uh, some of the games only show up on these menus for the super cards rather than uh, being listed separately. Nature's Way to Span 13 and Soundtrack uh, Trolley to Wing War. And to escape, I'll have to escape this. Now going down to the 2 meg super cart. You have uh, different games entirely. You got bigger menus here. Uh, for a flyer to break through. Uh, Buck Rogers to connect four. Crossfire to football. Frog stickers to Midnight Mason. Lobster Bay to Parsec. Uh, Picnic Paranoia to Shanghai. Slimeoids to Submarine Commander. Oh, you notice we got our old friend now, uh, Stargazer123, uh, the astronomy program that works uh, so well. And tennis to zero zap. And pressing the space bar again takes you back to the beginning. So that's running that pretty much uh, through its paces. On, uh, you know, if you want to play amazing, press A to select it. Okay, we got the TI color bar screen. Press 2, press 2 for amazing. Uh, so we have to use the keyboard here. Uh, one player, escape maze, simple, visible, mouse holes, fast mouse. Uh, We'll have one cat. Now the only problem, okay, keep that too. There we go. With using these uh, economical uh, imitation Nintendo controllers, is this D-pad is not a joystick. Uh, and it's uh, cumbersome trying to play a game like this. Right. Not to mention, game. too, that you've got some delay due to the emulator and you've got some delay due to the digital television. Uh, the emulator may put in a delay of like one twentieth of a second. I haven't tried running it back to back against a regular TI. Mm -hmm. Other people also complain about these flat panel LCD or LED screens mm -hmm. uh, that they have a delay in them. Yes. If, you, if you want to play arcade games, you want a CRT. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so and keep in mind with the right cable, your Raspberry Pi system can actually be hooked up to an analog set. Mm hmm. Yeah. What you don't see here is I have a, uh, well here I can show you, is I have the Raspberry Pi here is hooked up through a HDMI to VGA adapter yeah. on the back of my VGA to USB converter. Right, and you've got a capture device in there too, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah so, yeah, so we got a little delay built in here. <laughs> Let me see if I get this. You don't get that you don't get those features for free. No, no. But uh yeah, so with the uh uh HDMI to VGA, uh you could run HDMI to RCA. Uh if you've got an older TV that only has RCA inputs. 
Right. Well, they're actually, you don't have to really do HDMI. You can just do, you can get a straight RCA out. So you're basically getting an analog mm. um, output. But I mean, obviously there's a frame buffer still mm -hmm. in, the, in the GPU. Yeah. And some electronics to turn it from the digital domain into the analog domain. So once yeah. again, might be slightly faster, but mm -hmm. not instantaneous. So here's the uh, Raspberry Pi version 4. And uh, there's a little fan. And uh, this has heat sinks on it. And it's got two HDMI outputs and the uh, USB-C input and the audio output and four USB outputs in a, uh, uh, oh, I forget what those are called. Looks like a uh, Cat5 output. I'll put this cover back on so the fan can do its job. And here you've got the two controllers plugged in, the dongle for the wireless keyboard. Oh, wireless keyboard, yeah. For about uh, Somebody sells a real one of these. And this is an imitation one that uh, Showtime, you can make it light up. Uh, here's your uh, uh, direction control pad. And you've got alphanumeric. Uh, this can do everything that this can. So let me see what I'm doing here. I have to get my notes. I had rather extensive ones on this device. <clears throat> and I never printed them out. Okay. <laughs> because I had uh, what... Uh, what key presses were what? So I think uh, extensive notes, but not not on hard copy. Uh, no, I'd have to go back into this computer actually. Yeah, I don't look do that. <laughs> but I think there's like a uh, what was it the uh, command key? Hmm. Are you trying to break out of this, or are you trying to do something? Uh, no, there was a, uh, the TI function keys. Oh, yeah. I quit. Uh, well, anyway, that was amazing. So with this uh, keypad, we can, uh, oh, Okay, now we're doing stuff I didn't want to do. I don't want to get into the uh, configuration Oops. and everything here. Uh, but yeah, so in RetroPie, you can configure your audio, your Bluetooth, uh, everything else. So I'm going to quit this. Hmm. Now, how do I get out of this screen? Yeah, they give you commands there at the bottom of the screen. Hmm. Well, it's not a TI demo if everything works fine. But I would really. Is it a uh, TI demo if you don't have a TI? <laughs> it's just a demo, and therefore yeah, by yeah. design doesn't work well. <clears throat> oh, here, I can actually use the arrow keys here. Themes, yeah, file manager. Browse, copy, delete. That sounds dangerous. I don't want to go into anything like that. RetroPie setup. Run command. Our options are uh, select, menu, back, B for back, A to launch. Uh, 
Oh. Oh, the arrow keys. Left and right. Okay, so this takes us back into our menu again. So most of these games play just fine. Uh, in uh, TI-99 Sim emulator that you can get online rather easily, uh, it has a cartridge convert program where anything that's a bin file for binary, like for running on a uh, uh, Final Ground 99, uh, any of those cartridge files, it can convert from .bin suffix to .ctg, which is what this thing uses. So I'm going to... Uh, Press enter, arrow down to quit, because this is a computer and you want to shut it down correctly. Select quit and shut down the system and really shut down, yes. One interesting thing about this emulation is that the, uh, oh yeah, th this particular machine came with a hefty power supply and an inline switch. Okay, so I've shut it off. It's awkward to get the uh, micro SD card out of here. So you have to use a tweezer. And then I got my little storage case here for uh, micro SD cards. got this little box that can hold a dozen of them. Oh. And I turn the power on. Uh, there we go. And here's your usual uh, Linux startup screen loading RetroPie. And uh, yeah, HDMI output. This works real nice on my uh, modest 32 inch. Uh, a flat panel uh, Samsung or LG. I got one, one in each room. And it uh, is very sharp and easy to read. So there's a lot going on here when this little machine starts. So this really doesn't hold a candle to uh, Eric Firestone's uh, FPGA uh, TI on a card. where he had everything implemented on that with uh, floppy drives and uh, RS-232 or PIO ports, things like that. Okay, so now we're no longer in TI mode. This is uh, main mode for uh, arcade games. So if we press A, Again, it's not a TI. So A to select. Yeah, this is all controller operated. You don't use the keyboard on this. So these are all arcade games that you've stand, seen uh, stand-up machines at the arcade uh, to play. And I think there are like uh, 20 8,500 uh, games on here. So you've got arcade games. You have Atari 2600. 
7800 Lynx ColecoVision. Our old buddy there. So we can go down to uh, Centipede. Select that. It loads it. It is loading. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So we can go through the uh, go back. Uh, the mini computer, this system, I think this was called the Super Famicom in Japan. Uh, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Intellivision, uh, MAME. Stand Up Arcade, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Nintendo, Neo Geo, that was a pricey system when that came out, Nintendo, uh, PC Engine, this one's interesting uh, because in it we have our old uh, friend Takes a while to scroll down here. <laughs> you can jump to it, uh, but I don't feel uh, comfortable trying to push the buttons and actually jumping to the letter T. Time Ball. Uh, you may remember this from uh, some years ago at uh, the Chicago TI Fair. Uh, I had a uh, TurboGrafx-16 uh, running Time Ball uh, written by our friend uh, Manuel Constantinidis. And this place where it's a sliding block puzzle where you have to move the blocks around where the ball continues. ball must be made out of glass. Now previously Manuel had written, uh, he came over uh, from Australia and visited us for that fair. I was quite happy to actually see him. Uh, yeah. He had written a game for the uh, TI called Diablo. Ports of various games, PlayStation, RetroPie, Genesis 32X, Sega, SG-1000, Super Nintendo, Vectrex. Yeah, if you like ve uh, vector games, but you don't want to shell out big money for an old uh, vector graphics Vectrex anymore, uh, you can play a Manila emulation. Virtual Boy, Wonder Swan, which was a Japanese release game. I forget who the original was. You can look at all games that are listed here. You can save favorites. You can go back to recent. 
and here we are at Arcade again. So, uh, yeah, this is what I originally bought this machine. I bought this machine. It came with this cartridge, or this uh, SD card, like a 64 uh, gig card, uh, with uh, nearly 9,000 games on it. And I e eagerly looked through it, and there was no TI-99 4A on there. And I took the card, and I put it on my... Uh, PC, and I peeked in it, and I saw all these directories for all these games, but not for a TI. So as far as I know, this unicorn is the only one in the world that exists uh, for a uh, Raspberry Pi that has TI on it. And I had, uh, let me shut this down. Well, now it's loading something. <laughs> well, loaded afterburner. <laughs> well, I did print out some of the docs. Start to access the main menu. Okay. Of course, finding the right controller is always fun. Ah, right, here we go. And so since it's a computer, you want to correctly shut it down, not just pull the plug out. Yeah, this game machine, uh, this uh, mini uh, Raspberry Pi, I got on the uh, Facebook Marketplace uh, from a relatively local vendor uh, who was selling them all set up. I ain't smart enough to uh, do the uh, make install and everything else involved with trying to uh, set one of these machines up. Now we're going to break this setup down and get into TI mode. Oh, also, uh, you can play it with your old, uh, this is my old Gravis Destroyer. Uh, game controller and this does not use a uh, USB it uses the uh, old input for games on the back of a PC but I got an adapter so I can use that again the d-pad is not a joystick and you do not get accurate control with it especially because you can push down in the middle and hit all four directions at the same time so it'll take me a couple minutes to change over. Any questions from anybody? So we'll set up the 
TI console. You know, it's funny how this works out. Used to have to have hundreds of cartridges, and now with the Final Grom 99, you can have one SD card, and I think this one's got like 300 cartridges on it. Uh, used to be it had to have a huge P box uh, and the floppy disks for the library took up many uh, suitcase sized boxes. Uh, now with the Nano PEB, I got a compact flash card and it's got like 1400 floppy disks on it. So uh, something like the Raspberry Pi there, having uh, its storage capabilities, is uh, just amazing. Yeah, here's the uh, output, the HDMI output from the uh, Raspberry Pi to an HDMI to VGA adapter. And uh, this device, this OptiBase, is VGA oh, in to USB out. So we take a couple minutes here, have to disconnect stuff, reconnect other things. So if you're traveling and you want to play your TI games but you don't want to bring your console along, you could use one of these device, Raspberry Pi devices and uh, it'd be easy to set up. Hmm. Well, this is a puzzle. Uh -oh. Again, it's not a TI meeting. Excuse me a minute. had a short uh, VGA cable that reaches just from the uh, TI to the converter here. And I can't find it, so i got to get a three-foot long one. Plug in the VGA converter. Turn on the uh, Nano. Turn on the TI.
uh, re-enable the uh, video capture device. Okay, now we're in TI mode. Let me expand this screen to cover this other one there. All right, so now we're using a real TI again. Huh. So reset the final ROM. Get the loaded here. So the uh, a lot of stuff I was doing was with the uh, GEM project which stands for Graphic Environment Manager. Press I here. And remember last time I was running it with a simple demonstration program uh, that I could not seem to get to work. And of course, as usual, the uh, most of the problem was on my end. But I'll show you what's going on here. Well, here, let me show you what's uh, involved with GEM. So the GEM cartridge is like six, seven cartridges in one. Of course, you got console basic. You've got extended basic version 2.8. And then you've got extended basic 2.8 plus XXB. Then you got the one that's used most of the time is XB256. Uh, there's T. 40 XB, which is a 40 column version of extended basic. T80 XB, which is an 80 column version. Uh, option seven there is the missing link. Now I'm pleased as punch that they're including the missing link with this because I think it's been a long unsung uh, program uh, where you can do all sorts of stuff and um, but you have to load it in extended basic first. And there's a couple disks of demonstration programs for the missing link. And the missing link number eight, uh, the TML graphic adventure, is cool because it shows the top two thirds of the screen are graphics, and the bottom third is a window of text for anything you want. And for convenience, they got number nine there, DM1000. So we'll hit number nine. Oh, that was interesting. Uh, here's an unreadable screen of <laughs> yellow on or light red on dark red. We'll do file utility. We'll look at uh, one. Okay, this is the disk I set up for the missing link. It's got all the utilities on it. Uh, we'll you do a file utility on number two. And uh, what? Oh, it says the device order. Error. Okay. Well, we'll go into XB256. And uh, gem demo. Uh, okay, that's corrupted. All right, this machine apparently didn't like moving from uh, one area of the house to another. So I'll reselect. Uh, now you see it's taking a while there for DM1000 to load because it's not loading just itself, it's loading everything. Ah, okay, it's clear now. Reset that, go back into our TI screen. We're going to select 4 for XB256. Now it's looking for a load program on disk 1. It didn't find it. Uh, the nano's rather quick about that, so we got uh, it came right up with this. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this program, especially like line thirty-one. At the end of it, after next I, 
and line 100 at the end of uh, XB256, parenthesis uh, 1, end parenthesis. Uh, don't see any problems there. But let's try running this. Oh, next without 4 and 31. Hmm. This again, huh? Yeah. Well, there it is. But now what we can do is uh, I, I sent this program in to the guys at Atari Age, and uh, Senior Falcon looked at it, and he said with the uh, editing software they have, uh, what popped up is unprintable uh, character codes is actually here on the end of these uh, this next I. So I will press function one and so delete. Our problem was we were re-editing rather than deleting and reinserting. Yeah. So now we'll try running it again. Oh, now it runs. It's not crashing. I've only had this problem once before in my life. Oh, now we have an error in the line 100. So we'll edit that, go to the end of the line. Delete whatever's there. What it'll do is it'll run this, uh, it'll run this twice. So here's XB256. Instead of 125 characters to work with, you got 255. And now it's running the second part, line 100. So that was it. The whole problem, the past few months I've had, I typed in uh, this demonstration program, and I couldn't get it to run. And uh, I was suspicious about this. And here's the uh, demonstration of GEM, where it shows you in TI Extended Basic, you've only got 125 characters to work with. Now it's in XB256 mode, and it shows you the 255 characters, where you got a true lowercase that's different from just a small uppercase. You got a 40 column mode. You got an 80 column mode. You can call the missing link, and it's drawing its triangles. But the grant of the uh, text is still there, and it'll loop over again. So I'm just very happy that uh, we finally found what this problem is, and uh, Jum works fine. So I'll have a uh, the guys at Atari Age are really thrashing around uh, trying to find out what the problem was until I finally sent them the uh, sent them the program and with their editing software they were able to see what the problem was. Oh, funny how this is coming up red like that. <laughs> Okay, what do I have? Gem Dem, Gem Demo, Gem TML. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my fault there, because this runs from 7, the missing link.
Okay, so this is a simple logo type uh, program. Uh, we're now in the standard graphics mode uh, normally used by XB. Enter an angle to be used in drawing a poly spiral. Uh, James? Got a number? Let's give it a good 90 degrees. And press enter. Okay. And it displays it for several seconds and then asks you again. Another number? Let's try 30. Their program doesn't uh, draw shapes this big, but I like to have a little more on screen. Sure. And if you enter 100, now you start getting these uh, logo type. Uh, uh spirals geometric yeah anybody got sure, a sp yeah. spirograph here's 200 20 gives you a huge spiral. Yeah, but it'll draw off the screen without crashing. You just don't see it. I, I like the way TML works. It's funny, you go above a certain limit and you don't get the star shapes anymore. This yeah. was 300. So I'll put that. Go to uh, RxB. So we're going to load regular TML from disk and run it. This is not the gem version. This is the old version. No, we don't have a MyArk controller. One disk file and one for 16 colors. Okay, so we're going to run the conventional TML demo here. Uh, gems version of TML has fonts built into it and so it can actually run this demo but it can't run the paper saver demo because in paper saver uh tml is loading uh, fonts off a disk i can show you those later so it's loading the tml demo i mean someday i gotta get like a little mirror here on the right side of the uh final gram to uh, let you see that the uh, lights are blinking. <laughs> Come on, where's the today button? Okay, I'd have to say the machine's hanging up on us. Uh, <laughs> this could be because when you run a bunch of assembly programs, one right after the other, the, uh, state. the machine complains. They don't clear memory correctly or something. So we'll try that again. Run TML again.
yeah, once I figure out how to rewrite this demo uh, to call the uh, internal fonts that are built into Gem uh, rather than the uh, external ones that are uh, <clears throat> Uh, on disk. Now it's funny how I could run this program earlier and it don't want to run. Well, we'll just shift gears and do something else. <laughs> 638 on compact flash 3. Yeah, yeah, this ain't working out right. Okay, so I'm going to remove the uh, compact flash card from the Nano and go into the library of compact flash cards. And take out number three. Carefully slide that in. Operating system. Let's go with uh, uh, this is Gem also. Let's see how this works. Let me check my notes here. So, what I'm looking for is 638. Okay. All right. So, on this, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to load XB256. We're going to remove the disk that's in uh, Virtual Drive 1. What number was that I said? 638. So in drive number one, we're going to put in disk 638. Say goodbye. Uh, pick up uh, XP256. And here's Diablo, my manual constant tinnitus. I'll get his name right yet. Uh, so here's uh, Time Ball. Uh, one for joystick control, two for keyboard control. We'll go with keyboard control. Alpha lock is down. And it's uh, trying to set up a... Uh, it's setting up the maze. Now, uh, Diablo, I know people, they've spent all night playing this game. Uh, it's a very slow-moving game. But as the original ad said, the uh, moving ball is inexorable. It, nothing can stop it. And, uh, yeah, Manuel is nice enough. He gave you, uh, in lieu of a spinning clock, uh, some indicator here that something's going on by having these letters disappear one by one. Again, Diablo's the uh, moving block puzzle. You've got a whole grid set up with one square missing. And uh, it's not going to do anything uh, until I press uh, any key. And so what you can see here is there's a ball in the middle of the screen uh, about one third of the way down from the top. I don't know what direction it's going to move. And you've got to move that missing square around to uh, shift the squares to keep it from falling off the edge of the screen. Um, and you've got to keep looping it back in play. Now, once you get about half of the screen 
Oh, and the uh, uh, the square the ball was on will remove itself from gameplay after it exits the square it's on. So after you've cleared about half of the screen, you will be uh, the perimeter will change color, and you will be allowed to wrap from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right and vice versa. So we're going to try to uh, play this. Okay. Okay, that's not where I wanted to go. Okay. There, so nothing's going to happen until it falls off the right side of the screen. Oh, nothing like going the wrong way. Well, that's not going to help me anyway. So, <laughs> even on a slow game, I can't keep up. And uh, so that's uh, Diablo. And uh, play again, yes or no? Well, yeah, you can play it again. And um, eventually I got better at this. I haven't played it in a while. But you can see how this was a forerunner to a uh, the uh, game Time Ball that he did for the Turbo Graphics. Yeah, I talked before about how great it is. You know, this little SD card uh, or the compact flash can hold hundreds or thousands of games. But what I've had to do is come up with a loose leaf binder that says what everything is at every position uh, so I can find this. So, uh, as you can tell, I like games a lot. <laughs> the uh, Compact Flash has got uh, the uh, Barry Travers uh, Genial Traveler on it. Okay, we're going to change the compact flash card back again. Yeah, you'd never think you'd need more than one compact flash card. 
I remember lugging suitcase sized boxes of floppies to the fairs and to the club meetings too. Mm. So what do we want? <clears throat> 7.30. So we're going to remove the disk and drive one of them. Oh. Boy, this delay is enough to really mess you up. Reset the final gram. Uh, I just uh, prefer RXB because I can do a uh, this directory from it. Oh, okay, this is from Tiger Cub. Uh, this is their uh, calculators and conversions disk number two. Hmm. So if you want to any your calculator, add and subtract. So the Easter calculator is still correct. Uh, which, which one? I think that's number four. Easter? Yeah. Well, I don't know what that is. Let's find out. It probably calculates the Sunday of Easter, either Western or Eastern. Oh, that's a tough one because that's based on the uh, phases of the moon. Yes. When a year will fall on. Well, let's see if it does it for this millennium. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always interested in those kind of time programs because the co calculation is a little complex and as time rolls on, they're less yeah. likely to be accurate. Well, that's why, uh, you know, my favorite astronomy program, Skyscape, it, uh, it does a whole lot of calculating from an unknown date. I don't know if it starts at 1900 and has where all the planets are and then has to count on its fingers to figure out uh, uh, what the current sky is. So yeah. this is April 17th. I don't know if that's... That's no, correct for the Western. Okay. All right. So let's do it. another date. Well, last year, said April 4th. Yeah, that's correct too for... Yeah. Okay. Still good. Disk one load. Funny, this is not the... Uh... <laughs> So we have add and subtract. Uh, yes, Bart, we can see your chat. Oh. Yeah, we have a gentleman by the name of Bart Hurst who's been offering suggestions. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a lag, it seems, that uh, when he was offering suggestions for the uh, RetroPy emulator, he had already kind of figured out a solution. And I guess. He also had asked about RetroArch supporting multiple disks under TI-99 emulator. Yeah, my guess is no, that none of those front ends are particularly good at doing disk management as of yet. Mm -hmm. But they tend to be either 
you know, arcade style cabinet centric or or game console centric. So they either have, mm -hmm. you know, fixed ROM set or or cartridge oriented. Mm -hmm. So if and when you get into discs and keyboards and things like mm -hmm. that, you run into the uh, into the swamp. Well, it's running uh, TI ninety nine Sim under Retro mm -hmm. Arch, under Emulation Station, under Raspberry. You know. Yeah. So you seem to have a few layers here. Yeah, and, there are uh, multiple layers. Their their interfaces are all a little different. Uh -huh. uh, I would like to get that one uh, SD card, uh, get the files on it, put onto that bigger SD card. Uh, that has MAME and everything else on it. Uh, I can see a directory on that card labeled uh, TI-99, but there's no data in it. Where all the other directories, you know, Atari 2600, you know, ColecoVision, whatever, uh, they all have many files in them, so there's nothing in TI, and I don't want to damage that card by copying files to it, uh, that it can't run or you're yeah. making a mistake. So I want to back up the card first and uh, then have a work card I can play with. Well, this is calendar. So in 1582, Pope Gregory XIII uh, made some corrective changes to the Julian calendar. The new Gregorian calendar was slowly adopted by Great Britain in 1752. Russia in 1918 and Turkey in 1927. The changes in 1582, the 5th of October became the 15th. The current 30 and 31 day months were established. February would be 28 days, but would have 29 days if the year was evenly divisible by four, except for century years they were not evenly divisible by 400, according to the World Book Encyclopedia. Tap any key. D, day of the week, 10-15-15-82, oh, 9 Boy, that is an end-of-year calendar. That goes up a ways, doesn't it? Uh, your choice. Okay, let's go with day. Day of the week. Uh, so what's today's date? Uh, let's see how it's the 5th. Hmm. Uh, month, third month. The day is the 5th. Ah! Gee, I did it right. Mm. Everybody was so worried about, remember that TV show, The Millennium? And they did a <laughs> countdown every week. Oh, it's only 200 days left to the millennium. And everybody thought the world would end. Well, I don't think everyone thought the world would end, but they, you know, certainly sensationalized the problem. <laughs> no, but the hype was, yeah. uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, that was correct. So uh, let me check uh, on uh, the day of the week. Okay, so according to that, I was born on a Wednesday. <laughs> hmm. Oh. And so was my sister. Okay. Well, you can figure that out. On what day of a week it was. You were born on a hump day. <laughs> Cyber Abacus. 
Oh, I'm about as good with an abacus as... There's a more advanced type of abacus called the Soroban. I don't yeah. know if that's one that has the... Can you tell me what that is? There are different types of similar counting devices. and Here's my little dusty paperweight abacus. Oh, okay. And then we had a guy from one of the other Chicago groups that had his uh, his modern abacus with the reset button. Mm -hmm. He was toting. And it's like, really? You need a reset button? Now this has already got me confused. If you don't have the docs. Okay. Well, it gave us 55. Okay. This is add and subtract. Or this is uh, abacus. 55. Minus 33. It's 22. All right. I don't know how you get down into memory there. Okay. So simple abacus program. But it's nice how it sort of uses windows there. Yeah, I try to be uh, realize that uh, not everybody's into video games and everything else. Bromstedt, uh, he did a lot of good stuff. Uh, how about 19 there? Iterative calculator. Ah, oh, okay. Hey, this is great. Okay. So you enter hex and you get binary, you get decimal, you get sign decimal. Uh, sign decimal. What is it? The TI can only count so high and then it goes to negative numbers. That's at what? Radix 400 or something like that. Okay, so this is a handy for converting from. Uh, well, you have to enter. Hex. Function C changes fu function. So function C. Let's go to zero. Hmm. Let's see if it's lowercase c. No, I thought function C would change you from one to the other. Well, moving on. So printing calculator, radix number converter, Romstedt's unit converter. Unit converters are always fine. Seeing how this is America, we use inches yes. and pounds. How many furlongs to a meter? Or I just said meter to a furlong, but uh... yeah, in horse racing that always is interesting to where. Uh... <laughs> Circle track, it's eighth mile, quarter mile, half mile, you know, oval track. And We've got rods and chains. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, I think we got it here. Oh, you can convert temperature, time, mass, length. Yeah. Okay, let's go yeah. with length then. <laughs> How many <laughs> angstroms per foot? Okay. Uh, KR86 wavelength. Cubits. Uh, Fathoms, furlongs, yeah. Yeah, krypton. Uh, KR86, is that what, uh, krypton, or what is the uh, gas they use for Bureau of Standards for determining the length of a meter? I forget what the current SI standard is. Okay, so what do we know? You wanted a furlong. There we go, furlong. Okay. Input furlongs to what? Meters. So, well, it said eight furlongs, but I really wasn't. Yeah. I think it's showing you equivalencies. So, um, input the number of furlongs. Input for, oh, I didn't do that. Yeah. One furlong. And then it'll give you the one oh. furlong and then what the equivalent is on the other units of measure. It's 200 meters, 440 cubits, which is like from... <laughs> okay. So we'll do uh, number eight. Input meters, one meter is 3.280 feet. Okay. And one thousandth of a kilometer for one click. That's, okay. how, that's how you know if it's right, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Handy converter there. Okay, we'll yeah. quit this. Go back. Universal converter and unit converter. I wonder what the difference is. It might be almost the same. Bart Hurst was asking, put in one light year. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, this converts from one base to another. Yep. All right. Well, that was quick. This answers a lot of questions if you're going from hex to base or anything you want. Right. There was a, uh, a comic book, uh, science fiction comic book called the Albedo, where this guy created a, a universe and his own races, and they had their own uh, uh, alphabet and language, language system and number system. And uh, he was joking about how since they were in base eight, he was going to number his comics uh, from one through eight. And then for nine, it would be like one zero. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was another. There was another um, series of science fiction books more recent than that, um, where they discussed. You know, they were reestablishing standards and measurements, and ended up standardizing on base twelve. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not bad. It's what the Babylonians did for uh, their measurements, because you could divide it by. Uh, Right, it Two, was three, more, four, more, six. more even divisible mm -hmm. factors. We still use it for time. Yeah. So let's see what this other conversions one is. Uh, speaking of time, how are we doing on time? We have what, like a time limit on how much we can do? 
how long we could run the show. We don't really have a hard time limit. Um, you know, we can go to four if you want. We can go, we can stop a little earlier. It's mm -hmm. fine either way. Well, let's uh, try converting temperature here and see what they give you. Oh, okay. Fahrenheit to Celsius. Celsius to Fahrenheit. They get Kelvin in there. Yeah. Uh, Kelvin is... Calories or kilocalories. But that might be an energy as well. But um, Is Kelvin the Fahrenheit scale using absolute zero is zero, or is that the centigrade scale? I think there's one called Rankine, but I forget. I don't use them ever, so I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, well, let's find out. We'll just jump in with both feet. Here's Celsius. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go like uh, negative 400. Yeah, I think Kelvin is, is, is scaled around absolute zero. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so negative 400 Celsius is negative 127 Kelvin. Okay, now we'll do uh, Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Okay, to 400. It's 33 Kelvin. Okay, all right. Handy uh, disk of uh, all sorts of uh, calculators and converters. Well, temperature converter, yeah. Well, it's 50 degrees out. Ah, here we go. We got ranking there. 50 degrees Fahrenheit is 10 degrees Celsius. 8 degrees Reamer. Well, that's a new one for me. I've never heard of that one. 28.3 degrees Kelvin. Yeah, let's continue. Okay, 420. That was Fahrenheit. So negative 420 Fahrenheit is 21 degrees in Kelvin and 39 in Rankine. I still don't remember which one is the Fahrenheit scale using uh, uh, absolute zero is zero and the yeah. other one's the centigrade. Zero point in the scale, yeah. I think that's Kelvin, but. An easy way to find out is put the Celsius value of absolute zero in and see what comes up in Kelvin. Yeah, I was just stabbing at it. Yeah. So yeah, Tiger Cub, uh, Jim Peterson's Tiger Cub library has a whole bunch of educational stuff and utilities and things like this. Uh, there was one, uh, let's see what a uh, calculator with a K is. That's 16. Input first value and enter. Input other values preceded by plus minus. Okay. Enter and then okay. Well, we know what that was going to be. Okay, so enter divided by. 
enter, press the equal key. All right. I don't know why it's spelled in with the K. Let's do a list. No, no uh, rem statement, no credit who wrote this or what magazine it first appeared in. Yeah. Oh, the uh, 13, the six window, six memory calculator. I remember when this came out in Micropendium magazine, people went nuts about that. Oh, should we skip the instruction? Oh, sure, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> this calculator has six. Oh, I can't just crack it. Memories with the window to display the contents of each and will accept the complete calculation before pressing enter. Use plus for addition, negative symbol for subtraction. Uh, I think we went through this yesterday. Slash for division and asterisk for multiplication. So you have two numbers and display on the screen. Enter 77.1 plus enter 9.87 equals. You subtract one number from another plus memory in number one. So you can use the memory. Yeah, they made a big deal about this, about multi-windowing and uh, probably reading the article on Micropendium. Uh, although this seems pretty comprehensive on seeing how it works. Okay, I'll pass up on this one. Programmable calculator, iterative calculator. Boy, at 19 peaks my interests there. We'll solve difficult equations such as A equals x to the x times uh, square of x by iteration. Uh, boy, it almost sounds like a fractal generator here. Input any mathematical formula in the form of valid basic statement using a for the known value and x for the value to be determined. For equals, a equals uh, integer parenthesis x to the x and parenthesis equals square x parenthesis times x to change the formula into zero. Well, I'm lost. Uh, I never took calculus. I had to see what that was. <laughs> Temperature converter, straight line calculator. Why would you need a straight line calculator? <clears throat> uh -huh. Hmm, that's not quite what I was thinking of. Accepts input such as 6 plus 6 minus 11 times 2 plus 3 4. Okay. Gee, this one had sort of answered that question. Uh, I'm sh sure you see that online. They got this puzzle. You know, what answer do you get? 
and they show stuff with plus, minus, parentheses, times, things like that. And you got to work with the uh, parentheses first, and then multiplication, then division, then subtraction, or I mean uh, addition and subtraction. And it's mm -hmm. fun seeing everybody coming up with different uh, numbers. Six plus six. Yeah, if you factor incorrectly, you're not going to get the right answer. So six plus six you minus eleven. Of operations incorrect. Yeah. You're not going to get the right answer. So what are you supposed to do? The stuff on either side of the time symbol, or do you do the eleven times two first, and then do the six plus six minus? Uh, well, it depends what you're what you're calculating out, right? Like yeah, but these were equations. They used to have you factor and use the uh, the yeah. foil method. Mm -hmm. First, outer, inner, last. Yeah. So if we entered this uh, calculation, uh, you know, the first program I ever wrote for the TI was the uh, gas mileage calculator, where you enter in your original mileage, and then you enter in the next mileage on your odometer. And it would subtract, you know, the first input from the second and how mm -hmm. many gallons of gas you put in. And I got the strangest answers. I knew what they should be because I could figure it out on a pocket calculator. But trying to program the TI to actually do this in the way I wanted it to, uh, I wound up using parentheses uh, to get it to figure out stuff the way I wanted it to. Right. Yeah, the, right. The notion is that you're using the parentheses to force orders of operation. Mm -hmm. Well, we can give it a try here. I'm going to write this uh, calculation down so I get it right. So he says 6 plus 6 minus 11 times 2 plus 3 divided by 4. So 6 plus 6 would be 12, minus 11 would be 1, times 2 would be 2, plus 3, that would be 5 divided by 4, if you just did it left to right, but I'm sure there's a sequence here. Right, well, you're supposed to do the multiplication and division yeah. first. But okay, so let's yeah. type in. Minus 11 times 2 plus 3 divided by 4. And that's the answer it comes up with. 0.875. Right, multiplying two polynomials together, but... Let's uh, stop this program. I don't know if we can. Accept that, erase all, validate, position. That's it? Eight lines? Huh. Try listing that again. Yeah. Why'd well, have to sit down with the calculator and figure this out the hard way? So, uh, let's say we've, uh, Got quite a bit we've done today. So I'm going to sign off.
me see if I can get our sign off screen here. I just realized we haven't had any sound. Well, we've uh, had some, right? With the TI. I thought I've heard a beep a couple of times. But maybe not, maybe I'm mistaken. <laughs> I might have had a bad cable here. not able to effectively join us this meeting, but I think he would like us to remind the viewing audience that I believe we have a date set for the uh, fair already, and I believe it's supposed to be the last weekend in October. I think that's the Saturday the 29th. Does that sound right? Now let me see. Uh, for the fair... It'd be, uh, yeah, last Saturday in October would be uh, Saturday the 29th, uh, unless we do a combined fair meeting of November 5th. Right. But I think tentatively it's the 29th, if I remember how mentioning it. Um, I'm not sure if that's set in stone yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe he has mentioned it on stream before. I'm just juggling around stuff here trying to get the uh... There we go. Try to get things on the display that you want on the display. Oh, I was trying to get the uh, another screen uh, set up here. On, uh... oh, just trying to be fancy. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> the old uh, television test pattern. So, uh, yeah, well, I'm pretty good with uh, everything I got to run through here. Uh, yeah, the Raspberry Pi, uh, it only does so much. And uh, but this seems to run cartridge files fine. It's just you can't run cartridge files to look for disk, like Adventure or Tunnels of Doom or something like that, or at least not yet. 
uh, it's running TI-99 SIM, and maybe there's a way to do that with it. Mm -hmm. And in any case, TI-99 SIM has the uh, program, the uh, converter program, where to convert any bin file, like for a final ground cartridge, to a uh, .ctg file uh, that the emulator uses. So that's about it. I'm about set to sign off here. Okay. Well, just a reminder, I guess, unless something occurs, uh, our next meeting is is scheduled to be April 2nd, which is the first Saturday in April. Our meetings are usually the first Saturday, unless something, uh, other commitments sort of, or other circumstances get in the way. Uh-huh. Um, and we'll see if we're back in the library next month, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I guess we'll sign off officially then. Uh, until next month. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for watching. <laughs>